back to the water boy. Got a lockdown treat today. What we're going to do is take the Harvey H2O series and we're going to do a full breakdown and rebuild. So I just want to highlight some of the issues that this does have, but all totally fixable. So on this gearbox, this sonic weld here can, can leak. You can also get a crack in the thread just here as well, and that causes a leak. If we just turn it around to the front, this item here is called the shuttle weld. There's a little sonic weld underneath there that can sometimes leak. Um, the shuttle valve can also freeze as well. Looking down here, these are the uprising tubes which come from the resin tanks and they can split on these corners just there. That's something to look forward to. Um, the injector assembly in this unit here, um, it's working with water, there's debris in the water and it can get blocked. Um, so we'll take that apart too. And the brine valve, this one's an adjustable brine valve so you can alter um, which brine it draws up um, and that just clips in and clips off. So let's start by taking it apart. So first of all, we're going to disconnect the quarter inch tubing which connects the shuttle valve to the gearbox. It just quick release fitting, so you just push the grey bit in and then that releases the pipe so it can pull out. Really simple. Then we've got these quarter inch X bolts which hold on to the gearbox to the gearbox base or we nickname it the dolly it looks like a dolly which you'll see later I have seen people remove this with a power tool I prefer not to I know it's a bit long winded but more so when you're putting them back together you've got a stainless steel bolt going into a plastic housing and I feel you can strip the thread in it. So by doing it this way, you actually get to feel what the bolt is doing. And you've got more control. quite undone them you can just feel the ones but you're just biting a little bit on the thread just give them a little um, turn and out comes the gearbox all in one place okay so I'm going to strip this gearbox down just put a little towel down just to get any excess water you can take the valve cover off like so retain the bolts in there and the seal should be in the lid if they've dropped off like in this case they just sit back in but we'll concentrate on that when we do the rebuild so take out the regen paddles take out the service paddles If we unscrew the connectors, the valves come out as well. Like 
right so and these valves these are available on our website and it's always good practice to change them each time you do a service you turn this over which exposes the meters the meter just pull out and if you look carefully there's another seal on there and beneath that is a little spacer so this housing has been around for quite a while and um, they had different meters in it and when they changed the meters rather than change this old housing um, they created this little spacer to put them in there's a paddle and if you just pull this cover up all the gears are exposed and all the pinions and I'll show you how to put all these back in in the right order but for now it's a total rebuild so let's take it all apart Okay, let's deal with the regen side again just pop that meter off be wary of the seal and the spacer the paddle comes out the retaining cover with the screen mesh and then again all the parts there with the pinion and make sure you take that little bearing nylon bearing out there as well what's located in the bottom Okay, the next item to remove is this, the shuttle valve. This is what directs the flow from tank to tank, but also is needed during the regeneration. So I like to just pop it onto its back. There's four number two screws, which hold it in place. easily removed there's not much tension on those at all look very careful when you put them back in because they can strip the thread again use hand tools and if we turn this up riser as you can see you might lose a little bit of water there but towel down just to absorb that That's the shuttle valve removed. And if you stand it up again, and this is the brine valve on this side, if you just push to one side, the well, and the well just comes off in one piece. And if you look, the 300 grams is facing towards the top okay it is adjustable but we'll keep it on that because we want it on the 350 at the bottom and if you look down you can see just give it a slight twist clockwise and push it up 
the brine valve comes out and then up onto the top of the injector where it's connected push the grey bit in again I'll fiddly sometimes and out it comes that's the brine valve now we've removed the brine valve just lay it back again on its back Using the quarter drive, remove the retaining nuts and bolts. On the uprising pipes, Slowly, just give them uprisers a wobble and they'll pop out. Note they've got some O-rings on the bottom just there, make sure they're all intact. And also, looking down this side here, make sure that there's not any kind of breaks or fractures. And the same again with this one, little wobble, out it comes. Check again. That's the uprisers. I'm just going to temporarily bung these holes up because with best will in the world you never get rid of all the water in there. Just makes it a little bit easier to keep the surface clean and tidy. So we're going to take off the brine valve bracket. And as that comes out, it brings the brine level adjuster with it as well. If we then stand it up, there's four screws which hold in the valve gearbox base or the dolly in position a bit of support there from the dog Which connect the quarter inch pipe. What will happen then? We can slowly prise out. Then we just disconnect the quarter inch pipe. This one's always a bit tricky. We can take away that first resin tank. These are handed left and right, so don't get them mixed up. And then we take away the 
second one and that's the dolly and the final piece we're going to take off is the injector and what the injector does that uses water pressure which flies through a large orifice into a small orifice and as it goes over this what we call a venturi it causes an upwards force which draws the brine solution up from the brine valve into the tanks that's the injector okay let's start the rebuild then the injector has got the little venturi in there that can be blown out or replaced um, you to take, remove it put a screw in and it just pulls out they're very brittle so if you are going to take it out I would replace it all the parts are available on the link below then I'm going to place the injector back on the tank with the L on it L meaning left left handed and we're going to put the bolts back in. working with stainless steel into nylon like what we are um, it's important that you don't over tighten anything because it will strip the threads so again use hand tools don't get in the habit of using a power tool unless it's got a really low torque setting which will stop it And then once you get them it's roughly tight just go around bring them down slowly to the surface that way you know it's gonna bond with both surfaces equal that's the injector back on next take the dolly sort of position it how you think it's gonna go and with this injector piped to one side, just gently ease the dolly back into position. It's always good practice to re-silicon grease, and I use silicon grease, around these O-rings. And that way, they're not going to roll off, they're not going to twist, they're going to give you a perfect seal. Take your, your, the other tank, notice it's got the R on it for the right hand side and again line it up and slowly position it back in make sure the quarter inch pipe goes beneath the dolly and that can just be popped in and you know when it's in it won't pull back out and it really won't go back any further we removed four bolts so we're going to replace them again
it's important that you get these tight these actually have, are screwing into a stainless steel insert Pop it back onto the back. You can take the brine valve bracket and feed it up at the size of the right tank. And if you look on this side, there's a little bracket which it comes out of. And if that's in the right position, your foot or the bracket will just go smoothly into position just there and we can put the four screws in one two three four notice some of these screws are they've got like a residue on it don't think they rust because it's not. It's um, iron in the water, and the iron coats all these different bits. the resin tank back on okay while it's on its back it's a good time to put the shuttle valve back on um, look for signs of damage um, in particular this plug here sometimes that drips down into it but you would see like white markings this one's okay and also look at the threads on here they have had problems with that especially in this serial number um, but that old part is available and you can buy that from the link below so what we'll do now is just slide the shuttle valve onto this carriage just be careful about that injector part what goes into tank 2 we'll just pop it into position and there it slides take the four self tapping screws these are stainless steel as well Put them into position. That is the shuttle valve reconnected. Okay, now for the uprisers. Just remove the bungs, what I've put in. The slot into position. Be careful with those, those O-rings and if you have to, re-grease them. Also, there's an O-ring in the top here as well. Just check that one out as well. Um, it's good practice to change them if you take them off. But these are fine. And once they're located, take the four screws. These screws are actually in the brine all the time, so these are really high quality screws what don't corrode um,
same old riser in place, you can then screw them up into the shuttle valve. If it's not quite lined up and you feel like it's not making the correct thread, just turn it back a little bit and you'll feel it drop into the thread. That is the uprisers connected. Okay, so we're standing the softener up now, making sure that the bottom of the dolly pipe into the injector is connected, and we're going to connect the brine valve back in. So if you just sit it on top of the housing and just ease it back into it, it will click into position. And that's located. Take the pipe, bring it round the back of the left hand tank into the front of the injector so as this high pressure of water passes through this injector this is where the large orifice goes to the small orifice and the brine drawer comes up through this brine valve just there we then take the well slide it between the resin tanks and if you look at the bottom, it will locate round the base. Clip it into the adjuster. As you can see, as you turn this, the well moves up and down. And that creates the level of brine in the brine tank. That's the brine valve connected. Okay, this is the daunting bit for some people because when they have a look inside of all these pieces and everything, um, there's a lot to put in. So let me show you how I do it. I set this to my left hand side, which will be on your opposite side. And the first thing I do is I take the little bearing and I pop that in to the center of the gearbox, just like that. I then take this pinion and put it in the number six position, like so. I take the um, pinions. If you look, there's two different sizes, too long, too small. The two long ones go in three and four. And the short ones going five and also there's one what sits in a b c or d we're going to pop this in b now the way to change the hardness level on these machines is by changing the gearing in the a b c d position so you can have different gears for different hardness levels so this particular one is a 750 so we're going to put it into the b position Okay, looking at the gears, we've got three types of gears going into this. We've got one, what's just a gear. We've got another bigger with two gears on it. And the third one is the same size as the second, but it's got a larger gear on the face of it. So first things first, we take this small gear and the way I remember it is nipple up and we put the nipple the nipple gear into there just wind it backwards and forwards look and it will slot into position and if you zoom in down onto those two gears you can see they mesh together okay so now we've got to connect gear 4 to gear 5 and we use the larger gear and that sits face down and you can test see if they are meshing and as we zoom in look they're all moving now excellent so we take the next gear 
I'm going to put this into the three position. Again, if we zoom in, we're all moving at that point, so we know that's correct. We take another gear and we slot this into the four position again on top of the one what's underneath it. And what we were doing, we're reducing the gearing down. And then the last one in the three position it sits on top and all those are moving there so you can see these two are slowed right down there because of the gearing what we've achieved and likewise if I did this underneath the top ones would move very quick so we know that's working well next we take the final pinion and we pop it in that nylon bearing and to connect the two We've got this gear that sits like so. That's the gears all back in place on the service side. Okay, so we're going to put the gear cover on now. And it's quite fiddly if you don't know what you're doing, because what we're trying to do is get all those pinions into all these different slots. So if you look down to this hole just here, and then holding your fingers like so, We can slowly bring it down and line it up. And as you can see, look, this hole is now blocked with that pinion. And then all the rest of the pinions are sat it all in this face and there's no movement. So we know we've got that perfectly. We then take the paddle and we set that down. And I always set it in three to nine position and take the meter now I, I know they're going to it's going to sit in like so just from experience so what I'm going to do is just alter the paddle guide into that six and twelve position and I'm just going to pop it somewhere near and as you waggle it together, you feel it click into position and it doesn't move anymore. So you know that's actually in the right position. Then tip the spacer. And that goes over and around the meter. And finally, we're going to take this seal and just gently guide it into that hole it's important that that's a, a good fit it's not sagging like so and that's the service meter installed okay so we're going to do the regen side now I always like to start with the main pinion now there's a little o-ring on there, just check the integrity of it, we want it to be in one place, pop that in. And we've got the little pinions again. These are all the same size on this side. So we're going to put one in position 10, 9, and then this one, you've noticed there's three holes there. I'm going to put this in the middle one for now. And if we have to take a look at the gears, what's in this side. Again, we've got nipple up gear. We've got a smaller gear this time. And then we've got the larger gears with the two different internal gears on it as well. Again, we start with the nipple up gear. And we pop that into position to the 11 position and we just feel it and they are meshing together which what is what we want then the 10 we're going to take this this gear and put that in the 10 position with a smaller piece down so you can't see the smaller gear we're then going to take this one 
for the nine position again small gear down can be fiddly this one remember our little nylon bearing which sits in the middle if you put that onto the pinion you can pop that into position like so and then we have to connect it all up again so with the smaller gear facing down it sits like so that's the gears for the regen fitted okay so we're going to put the cover on it um, this one has got a fine mesh on it but again look we've got all these little points to put in which go on the gear shafts so what I'd do again I look for that little hole see that little hole there and we're going to put that over this pinion just there so line it up and it slots into position and if you look zoom in on there the white top of that pinion is poking through so we know it's in position we then take the paddle and just like we did before we're going to set it at the 3 and 9 position take the meter again and if you look that's the sort of position we're going to fit it so it's going to completely mirror that one so again set this at 6 and 12 position just going to slide it in and straight away it locks into position and just like the previous one we're going to put the spacer on first that drops into position and locates that meter nicely and then we're finally going to put in the seal at the top which will hold that meter in and also make a perfect fit when we connect it to the dolly body that's the meters connected okay so we're going to do the top half of the gearbox now so we just slide that over and as you can see the pinions are poking through it's fantastic so the first things I want to do is put in their little valves they pop in either side and if you look inside of there as well there's two o-rings one in each make sure they're still in good condition and screw that on we next take this cam and if you look it's got a little pointer on it I set the pointer halfway between these two points and there's a good reason why so when we put this into service for the first time we're going to do three steps we're going to do a half a turn regen a full turn regen and then we're going to leave a tap running to see if it will go into an automatic regen so by placing it just there it's close to this point where it's going to go into regeneration so you're not having to run gallons and gallons of water off next we put the paddle in and if you look that chamfered bit in the valve it sits in like so and just position it until it drops in there's some lugs either side and these lugs have got to fit in those holes like so if it's not feeling firm it's not in right so just have a move around manipulate them around until they drop into position next we take the gear for the regen side pop that in don't worry too much about the position just yet put your valves in and just like the other side check the o-rings are in good condition
Let's screw these in as well. Okay, so we've got to time this up a little bit now. And I put the first paddle in and just make sure it's pushed up against this valve there, look, so it's moving it. Um, we might have to adjust that in a second because, look, this one won't fit in. So if we just take the paddle out again, and then we just move it one degree backwards. Try it again. Look, it's still sticking out. It's not going to work. So we've got to move it back another one. We'll just try it with this one. And that's in, look, now. That's in a good position. And that's all the top half of the gearbox reinstalled. Okay, so we've just got to put the gearbox cover on there. Just checking that the seals are in place there. And if you look, there's two different points to it. So this is going to sit on this pinion just there. And this is going to slide into that bearing just there. And then we just put the two centre ones in and that's the gearbox reassembled. Okay, so we take the gearbox now and we pop it back onto the dolly. And screw down. Do these finger tight all the way around to speed it up. And again, you want this to go down sort of flat, so if you do them all gradually until they just start nipping up work your way around by the time you get to the first one it'll need doing again and you know it's coming down level you're not going to be pinching any seals and then when you connect it back up to the mains water, you're not going to get any kind of leak either. Again, lubricate these seals with some silicone grease. And then we're going to connect the pipes. So the one on this side. First one goes in, the one on the outside to the outside of the tank there. When you come to this side, this one just there, the outside one goes to there, and the one right next to the gearbox goes on the outside. That is the H2O Hardy Water Softener rebuilt. What we're going to do now, we're going to put this into the cabinet, connect it to the mains and then we're going to go through the testing procedure if you look in this D shape just there we've got a screwdriver slot so what we're going to do we're going to put a screwdriver in push it down and we're going to turn it 180 degrees to activate the regeneration and then we're going to turn it back to the D and that should do a full regeneration of about 12 minutes depending on your water pressure once it's done that we're going to push it in again and then do a 360 turn until it comes back to the D and let it go through its regeneration again.
going to be about around about 11 minutes and then once that's complete we're going to turn on the tap and just run the tap of soft water and in a short space of time it should go into automatic regeneration and that is a complete rebuild then